and welcome. Welcome to Impact Church. I'm Pastor Jay. I am Pastor Holly Arsenault. I'm Robbie Jones, the lead pastor of Impact Church. It is such a pleasure to have you with us. Impact Church is a place where we focus on exalting Jesus. We exalt Jesus. We equip disciples. Equipping disciples and engaging. And engaging our neighbors. Whether you're in your bed or at your breakfast table. We really want to encourage you to join in and worship with us. Hey, we hope you will enjoy our worship service. We're glad that you chose to worship with us here at Impact Church. We're really glad you're here today. You are welcome. Let's worship together.
Good morning, Impact Church. Thank you for tuning in and joining us today. And I am so excited. I have an amazing announcement. I've got a wonderful couple that I'm going to be introducing to uh, each of you and to our Impact uh, Church family. And uh, I think you're going to be thrilled. Today, I have the privilege of introducing uh, two new staff members that are coming on board for our church and our ministry. They're going to be a big part of our vision and where God is taking us as a church. And so this morning, I have the privilege of introducing um, William and Alyssa um, Etheridge to, to you today. And they are coming on. And let me, let me just share before they have an opportunity to speak and greet you. One of the things that's in my heart, it's been in my heart for some time, and I mean, no, you got to wait, wait for the right moment. You got to wait for the right people that God sends to you to show up. It's been in my heart and a passion of mine to have someone join us that has a, a deep desire for our young adults at our church. And the young adults, I'm talking about, um, and again, I feel like I'm young, but really I'm not. And, uh, but for those that are about 19 to 29 years old in our con congregation, I have been absolutely been amazed at how many people, how many young adults are kind of just showing up. Many of them have grown up in our church, and it's just time for us to um, give them some attention, give them the, the heart of God and let them grow in their um, walk with, with Jesus. And you, you need pastors. You need people who can do that. And so um, God just about, I guess it's about six weeks ago, God kind of put our, ourselves in one another's path. And um, William has been uh, ministering with um, Jay, Pastor Jay and, and uh, Pastor Jesse and different ones already in our congregation fell in love with our vision, fell in love with um, what God was trying to do uh, through Impact Church. And so we just began to share. We began to, and, and God connected us. And so I, I just want to talk to the parents out there for a minute. Parents, listen to me. You're young adults. It's a, one of the most critical times of their lives. And we as a church, I as a senior pastor, and committed to reaching out to your kids. And uh, I know they think they're grown, and many of them are, but they still need guidance. They need somebody who can speak their language and, and build a relationship with them. And so we're committed to that. So William, listen, thank you. Welcome to Impact Church, man. Um, just greet the congregation. Good morning, and how are you, Impact family? It is such an honor to be here. Uh, this is a place that we have wanted to call home for some time. God had to do some things in our lives in order for us to be prepared for this moment. Parents, young adults, we want to be a part of your lives. We want to be your family. We want to be your brother. We want to be your sister. We want to be here for you in any way possible. We want you to know that we are here for you. And we hope that you know you contact your friends and your friends' friends and your friends' friends' friends, and you come on out. We'll we'll contact you once we get the correct information, and we will just we're going to start something special. We're going to start something special from here on out, and we're just excited to be able to be here with Pastor Ravi. Pastor Ravi is an amazing man. Oh my gosh, you are so blessed to have Pastor Ravi. But thank you for having us as your family, and we are looking forward to seeing you soon. You know, one of the neat things. Um, and I'm going to give this a chance here. One of, one of the neat things for me is that God sent us a couple because we, we've got young ladies that need nurturing. They need discipling. They need someone to talk to. And we have young men. And I've just kind of been blown away as I've started glancing through our, our congregation and going, God, you, you know exactly what we need and who we need. And, and I just believe because you're a couple and, and because you, you have a heart for the passion of, of this ministry, I, I think you're God sent. 
I really believe you're God's son. So listen, greet the, greet the people. We're so glad you're here. I, we are so glad to be here. I'm Alyssa. I am just super excited to be present with you guys, to learn, to grow, um, not only together, but as individuals, um, just learning about God and, and just seeking him and seeing what he has for us and, and what we can do for the community and coming together and learning um, just so much. We're excited to be here, excited to, to see everybody and meet everybody. Um, and we just look forward to all that's to come. You know, one of the things that just impressed me about this couple is they're not just interested in just gathering a building, but I know in our conversations, it's about getting involved in community events and being a part of um, maybe some activities and some events that are already scheduled within the community and partnering with those. And, and that's what we want. And I think that's what the young adult community want. They, they don't want to just sit in a pew on Sunday mornings. That's part of it. I think we understand. But if that's all that there is, it, it, there's so much in their hearts to do more. And that's what is in William and Alyssa's heart, to be able to um, truly uh, just be a part of our community and to guide our young adults. And, and they're going to be amazing leaders. They're going to be, you know, it's not just about their ideas. It's about gathering information. What do you guys want to do? We are committed to reaching the entire families. We have a, you know, our children, we are, our teenagers, and uh, of course our adults. But now we're focusing on our young adults. We're coming after you because we love you and we believe in you and we're ready to release you. And we're going to celebrate everything that God does in your life. We can't wait. William and Melissa Etheridge, that's their last name. Welcome to the family. Thank you so much. The Word of God tells us in Luke 6 that when we give generously, generous gifts will be given back to us. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I don't know about you, but having blessings in my life that are running over sure sounds good to me. We believe in the principle of giving. For one, it is specifically outlined in scripture as an act of worship to do so. And two, so you can be divinely blessed. So we encourage you to become a committed partner in sowing seed into God's kingdom. I can guarantee you that if you stay committed and faithful, God will supernaturally open the windows of heaven and pour you out such blessings you won't have enough room to receive. Join us in sowing your best seed and you will be divinely blessed. You know, I'm so excited about what God is doing at Impact Church in 2021. I hope that with everything that happened in 2020, that you are beginning to focus on your future rather than what's happened in the past and, you know, what the news media is saying and all of the kind of distractions and a lot of the chaos that seems to be in our country. I think if anything that needs to happen with the Church of Jesus Christ is the fact that we become a stabilizing force in, in our world today. And together, in unity, I believe the Church of Jesus Christ is about to encounter its finest hour. And, but we have to keep our minds and our focus on, on Jesus. And so with everything we're doing, with our you know, launching our, our new emphasis on our young adults and um, our kids and our youth and our entire congregation, focusing on building relationships with, with our community and with each of you, that are tuning in and watching me today. I can't be anything else but excited in knowing that God has a plan for us. And so if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. It's a very familiar verse to many of us. But if you've never heard it, I'm just going to share it. And I want us to understand it in its context. 
This is a word that God gave to Jeremiah. And what we get to do is look back on it and realize the nature of God, the heart of God for each of us and how God looks at us. Because we're in the middle of a series titled, Hope is Here. Hope is Here. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but maybe some of you feel hopeless. Maybe the, the New Year um, you know, initiation and all of that happened with uh, you know, the first week of 2021. Maybe it's kind of worn off and now reality's hitting you in the face. Here's the, here's the truth for the, the believer. The truth is, is that Jesus Christ has our future. He has our future. So in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse um, 11, a familiar passage for me, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Come on, let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning for the opportunity just to be able to communicate with our congregation, those that are watching by uh, internet or on their phones, whatever device they're watching. Father, I just pray that the anointing that is in this place begins to penetrate right where they are. And Father, hope comes alive and that we begin to get excited about a future. Because we're not focused on knowing all of the destruction that we have to endure and see in our world today. But God, we know that you are a God that has great things in store for us. We give our lives to you. We give our future to you. We give our plans to you. And Lord, we thank you that hope is here today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I just really have... One real simple thought that I want to leave with you this morning, and I want you just to grab a hold of it and, and let it minister to you and, and just um, nurse your spirit. Nurse your spirit. Because here's the thing. If you only live with your soulish man, your mind, then all of a sudden you begin to realize that there are some difficulties that we have to go through. I, I know myself and our family. We're going through some very difficult uh, days. But here's what's the truth, is my God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. My circumstances do not change who my God is. And that's what I reach and grab, and that's my hope today. And I truly believe that that's a hope for you. And so I just, I just want to um, speak into your life and share a few things that I'm it's just resonating in my spirit. How many know there's a spiritual war that goes on in the heavens over each of us? Um, God has a desire that you be blessed. God has a desire that you prosper. God has a desire that your future is, is good. But how many know there's, there's a counterattack in that? That the John 10.10 10 says that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So in those two forces, and I believe in, um, in my interpretation, the way I understand Scripture, in the second heaven, because, you know, we find that Paul said he was caught up into the third heaven. And so there's three heavens we, we recognize through Scripture. We understand the heavens that we can see, the, the stars, the moon, sun, that, that heaven, that galaxy, we, we understand that. And then we understand there's a third heaven where God reigns. And we know that um, there is no sickness, there's no death, there's no disease, there's nothing in the third heaven. But in the middle of that, we find, especially as we look at the, the book of Daniel, when there's the prince of Persia and Daniel's praying and, and God sends the answer and then the, the prince of Persia, a demonic um, stronghold over that region hindered the message to getting to Daniel. And God released his archangels, Michael, even if it's to take up the battle. So we know in the second heavens, there's a spiritual war going on. And there's a spiritual war going on over your destiny and over your purpose and over your life. 
But how many understand if we stay faithful to God is that God then sees that we are victorious and that God is good and God is faithful and God is merciful and God gives us hope. So what I want to talk a little bit today about is that on one hand, we have hope in God, but what is the opposite of hope? The opposite of hope is, is discouragement. No, I'm, I'm probably speaking to some one today that, man, your life has just been hard. Maybe the holidays weren't as good as everybody else seemed to me. How many you know we can put on a face and all of a sudden, but when we get behind closed doors and we're alone, there's discouragement, that enemy of hell that comes against us. And so many times discouragement then overshadows the hope. And so there's a battle, there's a there's something raging on the inside of us. Is hope going to win or is discouragement going to win? How am I going to live my life today? How am, what, what am I dedicated my life to be? And so that battle that, that goes on. So how do we win? How do we grab a hold of hope and, and allow us to get to a place that we can walk in victory and that we get to a place that we are sure that you know what? God hasn't forsaken us. We don't have to go through this alone. I'm speaking right to you, Dad. Listen to me, Mom. Come on, kids. Tune in. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter the pressure. God is faithful. And God will see you through whatever you have to go through. And that's the hope that I'm bringing to you. And I want you to know that... It, Yes, what I've been teaching you about hope is that hope is for our future and faith is for now. And so I, I want you to grab that. Hope is for my future, but faith is for now. And when discouragement, come on, this is what happens to me and, and probably most of us. How many of you know when we're faced with a very difficult decision or we're faced with a very difficult season in our lives is that most of the time the anticipation of that season brings discouragement. I mean, I realize that oftentimes those situations, the anticipation of it is a lot worse than actually walking through it. You know why? It's because we put our focus on the discouragement rather than focusing on the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. So, I'm not going to preach very long today, but I want, to, I want to kind of give you an image of what God showed me. And it, it just confirms in my spirit what God is teaching me about hope. Because hope is here. Hope is here because God is here. And if God is with me today, he's going to be with me in my future. So I walk in faith today. I've taught you this. I walk in faith today. But hope is my future. So the Lord kind of showed me. He said, you know, Robbie, it's kind of like this. How do we get through the hard times? How do we defeat discouragement that tries to come against us? And here's what he showed me. He said, it's like having a rope in your hand. And you're standing in faith. And as you stand in faith, you take that rope and you kind of just begin to lasso it. And you throw it out. And you throw and you just hook hope. And as you hook hope, now I'm holding on to that rope. I'm standing in faith, knowing that Jesus Christ, his word is true. It, knowing that his word says that he will never leave me nor forsake me, and I'm holding, I'm standing in faith, but I'm holding on to hope. I've got hope, lasso. I've, I've hooked it. And so, when I got to walk, I got to walk this life out. I'm, I'm on a journey. The Bible calls us as we're, we're strangers, we're sojourners in this land. We're not, you know, Jesus said, you're, you're, 
in the, in the world, but you're not of this world, is that we have been prepared for a, a greater place, a greater hope. And so I got to walk this out. And so as I'm holding on to the rope, this lasso hope, I began this journey and I walk. Some of you just need to take another step. Some of you just need to understand that today is not the day to give up. Today is not the day to let discouragement win. Today is not the day to forsake your faith in everything that God has promised you. I'm standing, you know, the old, old hymn that we used to sing about standing on the promises. Anybody remember that? I'm probably giving away my age right here. But standing on the promises. Why? Because I'm standing in the faith that what God has given to me, that I've got a hold of something. And I'm not letting go. Because that what I've got a hold of is hope. And I'm going to take a step today. God promise you, he promises each of us grace for today. His grace is sufficient for today. And I'm not discouraged. No matter what I've had to go through, I'm not discouraged. I have hope today. I'm standing in faith. I'm walking in faith. And I'm pulling myself toward it. And I'm pulling myself toward it. And I'm pulling myself toward it. Until I arrive to exactly where God wants me to be. You see, I believe just on the other side of hope is victory. Some of you are waiting for victory and you're, you're back here and, and all you see is discouragement. And all, that's all you feel in your faith. And I'm just challenging you. There's a better way to live, church. Come on, impact. Join me. So we're not going to live in discouragement. It doesn't matter how everybody else lives. We are a church of faith and we are a church of hope. And today is the day that the Lord has made and I'm going to rejoice. And if God said it to Jeremiah, then I'm going to reach out and say, well, you know, if he, the, the Bible says that God's no respecter of persons. So if God said it to Jeremiah, then he can give me that same promise. He said, Robbie, I know the plans I have for you. And they're not praying, plans for disaster. They're not plans for discouragement, they're, but they're plans for a future and a hope. And all of a sudden, now, I lay off garments of heaviness, and I lay them aside. And now I can put on the garments of praise. And I'm standing in faith, got a hold of the rope, it's connected to hope, and I'm ready to walk. God, where do you want me to go? How do you want me to live? And I'm going to leave you with this. God, who do you want me to influence today? Because if I tell people that I am a follower of Jesus Christ, my Savior, and I'm living in total discouragement, what kind of testimony is that? That's not what God wants me to do. God wants me to live. God wants me to celebrate his faithfulness and show the world that it doesn't matter that hope is here. And I'm glad to know today that I'm not alone. Some of you that are listening to me, I, I, just, I just sense it in my spirit. Some of you are like, man, I'm just ready to give up. I'm ready to walk away from my marriage. I'm ready to walk away from uh, my job. I'm ready to walk away from everything that I've worked so hard for. And it, You know, circumstances around us can come on us like that. But today, this word that I've spoken over your life will change your perspective. One last story. You know it, I've shared it many times. I mean, know the woman at the well, she felt discouraged. She was embarrassed. She was shamed. She couldn't even go to the well with the other women of the town because they ridiculed her. But 
at that moment, at that place, she met Jesus. Jesus said, woman, you could have a drink of water. I mean, I've heard it said, you know, Jesus wasn't really trying to be real, you know, complicated. He was just asking for a drink of water. And she came back at him with an attitude. Why do you Jews only want something from us when you don't have anything? And he had an attitude. And he's like, woman, I just want a drink of water. And if you knew who was asking you for a drink of water, you'd be asking him for that drink of water because it, you would never thirst again. And then he says to her, go get your husband. And he said, you, you say it's truth. You don't have a husband. You've had five before and the one you're living with now is not your husband. And immediately her perception changed. He said, sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. I mean, a perception is everything. How is your perception today? Turn your attention toward hope. And let God show you the victory. Future and a hope. As he shared it with Jeremiah, I believe he's sharing it with each of us today. God is good. Let's celebrate him. 2021 is going to be a different year. It's going to be great victories, but there's probably going to be some battles as well. But the greatest news is, is that we serve a God that does not change. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you for your grace and your love. And I thank you for being with us. And I'm glad today to know that hope is alive in us. We stand in faith. And Lord, we're holding on to the rope. And we're pulling ourselves to the hope of our salvation. Knowing that God, that you are faithful to us. We trust you today, Lord. We don't give up. We don't let discouragement win. We celebrate the goodness of our God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Impact Church. Have a great week. Please, if you have prayer requests, if you have a need, if there's anything that we can do for you, please reach out to us. Our Staff is really ready to um, minister to each of us. And uh, they, they're, they have a passion. They have a heart for our congregation. So please reach out. We know that several in our church have been battling over the last couple of weeks of uh, COVID. And uh, we're trying to reach out to them and be safe. And people are asking, I'm sure, when we're going to get back together and get in uh, in-person services. But, Please know that we're doing everything we can in this time to keep you safe because this virus is even spreading through our church and we're not even meeting. And so understand the heart of your pastor. Understand, I really want to keep us safe and that's my desire. And so hear my heart, stay connected, stay faithful, make sure you give, make sure you sow into the kingdom. We're doing, listen, when you give a gift into Impact Church, we're not just sitting there. We are ministering. We're distributing to families. We're helping uh, so many of those in need. And uh, that's, that's, you know my heart. That's what we're trying to do. And that's what I'm committed to. We're going to do it in the name of Jesus. And I love you. Have a wonderful week. And reach out to us if you need us. Talk to you real soon.